It is the most breathtaking story. This is on the level of the miraculous. And when I tell this to people, their jaws drop, they're inspired. Some of them are nervous because there's some elements to it that really make you have to own your own reality on a level that you may never have owned before. And it's a true story that I heard several years ago of a therapist who worked at a mental hospital for the criminally insane in Hawaii using an unusual, mystical, secret Hawaiian healing method helped heal every one of those patients. Mentally ill, convicted criminals in a mental institution, a mental hospital in Hawaii. They were so dangerous that people would be, they would visit and they'd walk scooting down the halls because those patients were violent. They were either sedated or shackled virtually every day. The turnover, the nurses would quit on a regular basis. They couldn't keep doctors, they couldn't keep therapists. Until one day, this therapist got the job opportunity. He said, I'll go there, I'll work there, but I have to do my own method. I'm not actually gonna do therapy with the patients. Let me see their files, I'll see them over lunch, but I'm not gonna see them one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not gonna do traditional uh, therapy with them. They agreed because they were desperate. They were absolutely desperate. So he goes there, he starts doing his little stuff. I think he's a strange bunny, but they let him go about his way. <clears throat> Within a few months, those patients that were shackled and sedated were being unshackled and not needing sedation. A few months after that, they started to be released. They were pronounced as healed. They were freed. Within a year or two, most of the ward was released. Within four years, they were all released and the ward was closed. The open phone process is a simple process to, to solve problems and to release stress. And what the problem is, is a thought for which you have uh, a negative feeling. For example, uh, maybe you're in a business relationship and you have a thought of that person and that thought brings up annoyance and irritation, judgment. And so what the Ho'oponopono does is that it allows the divinity to transmute. It takes the unwanted negative energy and moves it, purifies it, releases it, and then exchanges that energy uh, with perfect and right light which may have blessing and answer. That's basically what the Ho'oponopono is. And what it has, it, it has three parts. It has repentance, uh, forgiveness, and then transmutation. And in doing that process, what it does is that the transmutation takes place spiritually, mentally, and then physically. And so it's a really a total rebalancing of your whole being because in the end, who you are is the three aspects of the mind, the spiritual, mental, and the physical. So the Ho'oponopono process allows the divinity to transmute any unwanted uh, negative energy within you spiritually, mentally, and physically, and then you heal. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. Our only purpose for existence is to clean. And the idea is that the reason you want to clean is you want to get back to zero. And if you're looking to find the perfect relationship, the perfect source of income, the perfect anything, you will find it at zero. There are tragedies in our lives because we don't take a look at where the, where the origin of the problem is, and it's always in self. So the tragedy being in life is that we're clueless and we repeat the same thing over and over and over again. And so, um, when I worked at, Hawaii, for example, when I worked at Hawaii State Hospital, uh, um, working with people who killed, raped, and murdered people, I had to ask the question, what is going on in me that I, I'm experiencing this? I'm experiencing a, a patient being violent, I'm experiencing um, staff going crazy, I mean, that sort of stuff. And uh, so having to take 100% responsibility for that. What's going on in me that I'm creating this experience. And so I just do this cleaning, and the cleaning, the Ho'oponopono is about going into the self, and specifically into the subconscious, and where the data is, and since everything is run by information, so the information in my subconscious is saying, is dictating to me what I'm seeing, what I'm experiencing, 
And so I just work on the data in me that I, that I experience as, quotes the other person. But if I see you as being crazy and goofy, it's only my experience of you. If I erase that, you can't be that way. Not possible. And so that's what I mean to be 100% responsible. Being 100% responsible is taking responsibility for what is going on in you that you experience of whatever. At any given moment, 11 million bits of information is playing, for which you are unconscious of. Yes. So it's driving you. So you don't have free will, but you have choice. The choice is, like Shakespeare is saying, to be or not to be free of the data. Mm -hmm. You have that choice, but the data is going to run you. The only question is, what data is going to run you? Is it going to be inspiration or is it going to be memory, which is dead stuff? Mm -hmm. So that's the choice, but you don't, one doesn't have free will.